Our bikes are our pride and joy and they should be checked before each and every race. Having a safe and reliable bike is essential, whether you're new to the sport or whether you've been racing for years. It's part and parcel of racing smart. So here are a few tips on what to check over before you head to the start line. As an expert tip to save you time and worry, why not regularly take your bike to your local bike shop and have it checked over by a trained mechanic? In all likelihood, if you've driven to your race, the first thing that you're going to have to do is to put your wheels into the bike. And this is a great opportunity to make sure that they're secured firmly and correctly. Both of the quick releases should be on the non-drive side of the bike, or the left side as you look at it from behind. The front quick release will need turning to go over the lawyer tabs. It doesn't need to be ridiculously tight, it needs to be secure and the quick release should be facing backwards. With the rear quick release, again it needs to be done firmly and this should be facing upwards and diagonally forwards like that. If you have this one facing towards the back, then you risk someone going into it and opening it up whilst you're racing. Once you've made sure that your wheels are centered and that they're secured properly, the next thing that you'll need to check are your brakes. Now these are the most important components of your bike because of course they'll slow you down on descents before corners or if you have to brake in an emergency. Firstly, just put one brake on at a time. Start with the front one, which for British people is generally on the right hand side. Hold it on and push the bike forward. You should see that it will not go anywhere and the rear wheel will raise up. Do the same thing with the left brake. And pushing forward, you should see it's locked up and not moving around at all. Both of these brakes should feel smooth as you pull them in your hand. If they're not, it might mean that the inner or the outer or even both of those cables need replacing. Next thing to look at is that the brake blocks are centered on either side. It should be equidistant away from the rim. Next up, have a look at the brake blocks themselves. There should be enough rubber here to get you through the race. If you notice that they're starting to get down, then you need to replace them because if you have a wet or muddy race, they're going to wear down to the metal and then you'll have no stopping power at all. Brake pads these days are something which are very easy to replace yourself. You simply get new rubber parts which go inside the brake shoes. And as you can see here, there's a big difference between a new brake pad and one that's been used a lot and is worn down. There are a couple of other things to check with your brakes as well. The alignment of the brake pads on the rim. When you pull the brake on, you should see that it's centered against the rim. If it's too high up, then you risk blowing out your tire if it wears that down too far down and you risk the brake pad going into the spokes. Lastly, just check that this quick release mechanism here on Shimano or SRAM brakes is closed down. You might need to open it up to get your wheels in and tires past the brake blocks in the first place, but make sure it's back down before you start racing. The next thing we want to look at are the tires. Now these are of course the contact point between you and the tarmac that you're going to be racing on. So it's imperative that they're in good condition and they've got no major flaws. To look at the condition of the tires, I will just have a look down and make sure that there's no obvious areas where it's gone down to the carcass of the tire or even where there's some slight holes or cuts or maybe even stones lodged in from when you've been training on them or from a previous race. In terms of the pressure, well you're going to want to come along with a track pump like this one which has a gauge on it. Now most tyres on the sidewall here will have a recommended pressure, but you might have your own preferences depending on the conditions in which you're racing. So for dry conditions I'd recommend around about 110 psi, but you might want to go below 100 if you find that you're racing in the wet. Okay now is the time to check your gears. Now this should have been done before you left the house, but things can get knocked, in particular the rear mech, if you've put your bike into the car. It's a very simple thing to do, just jump on your bike, either ride around the car park or around the roads next to the HQ, clicking down the gears and up the gears one at a time to make sure they're all working properly. The last thing you want is to start the race and find that your chain is jumping about. Once you're satisfied with that, well it's time to move on to the headset. Now this is what controls the steering of course, so it should be smooth. If you find there's any friction when you move your bars from side to side like this, it can make it dangerous when you take your hand off the bars to have a drink or something to eat. And once you're satisfied with that, hold the front brake on and rock the bike forwards and backwards. If there's any play, you should be able to feel it in the headset there, and it's not too difficult to sort that out. And once you've checked your headset, you should be pretty much ready to race. Of course, all the bolts need to be tightened up securely, but really this is something you should have done before you left the house with a torque wrench. So now you're sure that your bike is safe, 
it's time to head to the start line and make sure that you race smart. There are so many things to remember to pack in your kit bag when you go to a race that it can be easy to forget something, which of course will be very frustrating if you've driven a long way to the event. So our tip is to make a checklist which you can tick off each and every time you go to a race.